Alrighty, so yes, it was hard to hear that only five had made it and it was difficult for me like the rest of that day. Like my husband really tried to keep me cheered up, but I was just like, really? Like, wow, that's it? Like, I thought there were going to be so much more to like choose from. Like in my mind, my goal in my mind was like between eight to 10 embryos because I knew that after that point, you know, I'd have to wait for day three and then day five and then freeze. You know what I mean? So that was really hard to accept, but I was grateful for whatever that I had. And it helped me understand so, so much better as to why my IUIs weren't working anymore. The fact that I had all these follicles, they were there, but they were immature. They were just filled with fluid. So how would an IUI have continued to work if I was constantly getting immature or just fluid filled eggs? So that made sense. So fast forward to Saturday, retrieval day. Um, I'm trying to think what happened on retrieval day. We woke up. I had to take a, I had to have a full bladder. When I got to the clinic, they had me take a Valium. We, uh, and that's just to relax your uterus. You don't have to take it. I feel, I personally feel like I didn't need to take it. I wasn't in pain at all. I had Dr. Kiltz uh, do my retrieve, I'm not my retrieval, but do my transfer. He prayed with us before the transfer. He was really, really sweet, discussed everything, answered all of our questions. I will go ahead and probably plug, plug, put in a picture of our two embryos that we went ahead and transferred. Um, and then from there, we just went home. We not went home, but went back to the hotel relaxed and um, didn't really do much. We were leaving the next day, Sunday morning early, and we flew back home and we waited for 11 days for beta. Um, and I was taking like a test here and there, like several days kind of like before beta and it was negative, but it was too early to even be testing in the first place. I shouldn't have been testing, testing that gave me anxiety. But we did do our beta and unfortunately it did not work. It was devastating. Uh, I got a negative result. It was Wednesday, December the 6th. I did take a half day. I waited until I went on my lunch or was off for the rest of the day to listen to the voicemail. And they let me know it was negative and let me know how, you know, if I wanted to proceed with another transfer. We went, I went home. I didn't tell my husband yet. When he came home, I discussed it. I, no, I'm lying. We didn't even discuss it. He came home, asked me what happened. I shook my head no, and he walked away. And he had to grieve on his own for some time. And I didn't give myself time to grieve. I don't, I think I cried here and there. Like I shed tears, but I, I didn't, I don't think I really, I, I don't think I had the time or gave myself the time to grieve the loss of our two embryos. I felt like I had to move forward, that I had to plan whatever I needed to do for the next transfer, whenever that was going to be. I felt like I needed to protect him. I text everyone because everyone was a part of our journey. Um, we included everyone, our friends and family, and I basically let them all know what had happened, that it was unsuccessful, and to not directly contact my husband, anything that they need to contact through me. I felt like I needed to protect him um, because he had always been there to protect me through our miscarriage, through our failed IUIs. He was always there to, you know, have my back, and I wanted to have his back and for him not to be bombarded with, like, so many things. Um, we just discussed the next morning, um, after beta, what, what we were going to do. And we decided we did want to move forward with another transfer. We didn't want to wait, you know, six months or eight months. We knew it was going to come up soon. We didn't make a final decision as to when that would be, but we knew we wanted to move forward, uh, sooner rather than later. Um, and then I basically called CNY so that way I could go ahead and get uh, a new prescription for medications. I was using my FSA account, flexible spending account, um, through my employer. And um, I was using that and I wanted to make sure I went ahead and got my meds ahead of time. You just never know. You can get released from a job, fired at any point. So I said, you know what, let me order my meds while I have this 
this money here and I went ahead and ordered them just so I can have them just in case. And then um, that was it. That was our IVF retrieval and fresh transfer and how that went. It was difficult. It was hard. I really thought that, you know, once we got that negative beta that I felt broken. I felt like it had broken our marriage and I didn't think we would come back from it. I really did not think we would. The way we reacted and the way we were with each other that night, it was just difficult. I, I just felt like this is over. Like, yes, I knew I had three embryos left over, but it was like, oh my gosh, like I went from this number to this number and this is where we're at. I couldn't believe it. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed and you learned some more information from me let me see next topics you guys let me know what you want the topics to be um i'm not going in any particular particular order but um my next topic could possibly be miscarriage grief and dnc all in one how to afford fertility treatments how to deal with the failed cycle you know this youtube channel is for you guys so you dictate how i should help you and what you would like me to do don't forget to follow me on facebook and instagram don't forget to like comment subscribe and share you guys have an amazing day and i'll keep you updated bye